This is the AMD A4-5300. It is an APU launched in 2012. It is one of the AMD A-series lineup of CPU, which predates the AMD Ryzen series of CPU. This APU has two cores, two threads, with the speeds of 3.4 GHz and turbos to 3.7 GHz. This APU is on FM2 socket with 65 Watt DDP. Since this is an APU, it means that it has an integrated graphics or iGPU. And this is the Radeon HD 7480D with a shader cores of 128 and a base frequency of 723 MHz. However, this APU is 8 years old. I was thinking, how would this APU perform on modern games? Or common tasks that we do in our computer? Is this APU worth keeping? Therefore, stay tuned and we'll find out. Back in the day, this processor is compared to Intel Core i3-3220. On the processor side, Intel Core i3-3220 is better compared to A4-5300. However, on the integrated graphics side, Radeon HD 7480D is better than the Intel HD 2500, according to userbenchmark.com. Upon the release of these CPUs, the A4-5300 is cheaper than the Intel i3-3220. Therefore, this is the budget option back in the day. In addition, the CPU is also have almost the same performance with the Athlon 2 X2 250. The only difference is the integrated graphics which the Athlon 2 X2 250 doesn't have. Flashback 8 years ago, this APU was one of the options in PisoNet gaming system build. For those who do not have any idea about PisoNet, it is sort of an arcade gaming PC that you can put coins on the coin slot so you can turn on the PC and use it for gaming, internet browsing, and word processing. This kind of system is very popular here in the Philippines, and they use budget PC system that can run games. The AMD A-series APUs are the processor of choice because of the better built-in graphics processor. Anyway, I will make a separate video about it, so make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to notify you on my next video. Now, I will walk you through to the components that I will use. The motherboard that this AP was in is the FM2-A55M-E33 from MSI. It is a simple motherboard with two serial ports for keyboard and mouse, four USB 2.0 ports, VGA and HDMI slots, Ethernet port, and basic audio jack ports. Then I will use two by four sticks of 8 gigs in total of 1600 MHz RAM, 64 gigs SSD, 500 gigs hard disk drive for boot and gaming drive. If you are familiar with these components, they are used in my Athlon 2 X2 build. I will link that at the end of this video. After I put all the components, in the BIOS setup, I set 2 gigs of memory for the integrated graphics to use, and the remaining 6 gig is for system memory. I think this would be fair since Windows runs better in 4 gigs of RAM, and 2 gigs of VRAM is the minimum to run 1080p games. When I am in Windows, I check the system performance in common tasks that we do in our PC, like navigating folders, word processing, and internet surfing. Well, it was good and smooth because I'm using SSD as my main boot drive. Now, in order to test the capability of this system, I will test this on games. On testing games, I configure the graphic settings to any possible settings to make the game playable. I did not use any game capture software like OBS and Xbox Game Bar which is built in in Windows 10. I did that so I can get the real FPS on games in this system. Gotcha. Without further ado, let's go test some games. On CSGO, I felt like I need to include this on the benchmark because this game was launched same year as this APU. And this game is still popular until today. However, in 720p low settings, I was able to get 25 average FPS, which made me think that this CPU is not powerful 
since CSGO is CPU intensive game. On Rainbow Six Siege, in this game, I only use the in-game benchmark. At 720p low settings, I only get 18 average FPS, which is not playable. Well, this APU is not for this title. On GTA 5, I crank the setting to the lowest which is 800 by 600 with FXAA and MSAA off and I use the in-game benchmark to see the FPS numbers. I get the FPS figures in the last part of the in-game benchmark because this is mostly the environment when you are playing the game. I only manage 27 average FPS. I noticed that there are some delays in rendering the environment of this game. On The Witcher 3, this title is GPU intensive. I managed to run the game at 720p low settings but I only get 9 average FPS which is not playable for this APU. On Fortnite, I was glad I could run this game in this system with minimal stutters. Maybe because of the new updates, but I am not sure about it. Anyway, I was able to get 30 average FPS at 720p low preset. However, I noticed that in some areas in this game, some buildings were not rendered fully. You cannot hit it with your pickaxe and if you entered, you will have hard time to get out or end up being stuck. Well. You can still manage to play the game by going away with those structures. On Rules of Survival or ROS, this game is very popular in PCNet gaming here in the Philippines. In low settings, I managed to get 29 average FPS. Well for me, it is still playable considering that this is the common FPS on Pisonet Station here in the Philippines. On Paul guys, this is newly released game in 2020. It was a small game, it only requires 2 gigabytes of space in your drive. However, the recommended system requirement is at least Intel Core i5 or AMD equivalent, GTX 660 or AMD Radeon HD 7950 graphics card, and 8 gigs of RAM. It's a little bit demanding for a small game, but still, I try to install it and it runs but I only managed to get 21 average FPS in 720p low settings which is not competitive at all. Anyway it was a fun simple game, it really can get rid of the quarantine boredom. On Valorant, this is also a newly released game in 2020. This is the only game that I test in this system that runs better and very playable. Actually, I review and retest the game to see if my FPS figures are right because on my previous tests in other low-end system, this game has a stuttering issues. Maybe this is again fixed by those updates that keeps installing every time we play. Anyway, at 720p low settings, I managed to get 58 average FPS which is higher to all games I tested.
all the games I test, it seems that this APU is not that significant after all, except for Valorant. However, what if we put graphics card in this system? Since I have this graphics card which is the GTX 660 that is released the same year with this APU. Maybe this CPU will not bottleneck this GPU or it will bottleneck but not that much. Well, let's install it so we can find out. On CSGO, still on 720p low settings, the average FPS is 28 with a slight increase of 12%. On Rainbow Six Siege, still in 720p low settings, the average FPS is 58 with a significant increase of 222% that is now playable. Well, this title utilized more GPU to run, so it's obvious to see this significant increase. On GTA 5 still in 800 by 600 with FXAA and MSAA off, the average FPS is 34 with a slight increase of 26%. Still there are these rendering delays on the benchmark tests. On the Witcher 3, still in 720p low settings, the average FPS is 26. I get this FPS figure when Geralt is killing monsters, but mostly in the game story, it is about 30 average FPS, which is okay for this kind of game. The significant increase in performance is 189%, and I think this is improved due to the GPU that is been installed. Since I use MSI Afterburner to monitor the FPS and the stats, it really shows that the CPU bottlenecks the GPU. On Fortnite, still in 720p low preset, the average FPS is 49 and still the rendering issues are there. I think this is because of the CPU. The increase in performance is 63%. On rules of survival, still in low settings, the average FPS is 35 with an increase of 21%. Here also the CPU slightly bottlenecks the GPU. On Paul's guys, still in 720p low settings, the average FPS is 55 with a significant increase of 162%. I think this game is GPU intensive since it has colorful graphics. On Valorant, still in 720p low settings, the average FPS is 70 with an increase of 21%. Well, this becomes more playable than the rest. 30 seconds left. Bearing the 
this CPU with this graphics card really improves the gaming performance. However, this CPU bottlenecks this GPU. It is evident in the games I tested. In conclusion, maybe this APU is not that significant in some parts of the world, especially in first world country. However, here in the Philippines, this APU can still be significant and still worth keeping because it can still do common tasks like internet browsing, word processing, and low-spec gaming. This is due to our budget-conscious mindset. If it is usable, use it. However, I advise to at least install 8 gigs of RAM in total, 2 gigs for the integrated graphics, 6 gig for the system memory, and SSD for fast booting, and Windows navigation. For those who are thinking of buying this in the used market, since this video shows you how it performs, you should be aware that this should be cheap because it struggles to run some games. For those who already own this APU and thinking of upgrading by adding graphics card and run some games, well be aware that this CPU bottlenecks even the GTX 660, an older graphics card model, which means you cannot use the full performance of this GPU. I hope that this video gave you an insight about AMD A4 5300 APU and other APUs running in this era. If you have one of this APU or any A-series APU or any insights about this content, please share your thoughts and opinion on the comment section below. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.